a, a lie detector test. Every single human being knows what a woman is. So when you don't answer or say you don't know, you're not showing you're smart. You're showing that you're a liar. And why would you lie? Because you are so scared of telling the truth. It's a fascinating lie detector test. Look at this. And Avi does a great job here. Take a look. You will not believe the toughest question New Zealand's caretaker prime minister has received so far. How do you and how does this government define a woman? Um, I, to be honest, Sean, that's, that, that question's come slightly out of left field for, for me. Um, the, well, biology, sex, gender, um, people define themselves, people define their own genders. That doesn't really answer the question. Let's try that again. I'd ask again, how do you define what a woman is? Well, as I've, I, I think as I've just indicated, I wasn't expecting that question, so it's not something that I've, um, you know, formulated, pre-formulated an answer on. If you need to pre-formulate an answer to what a woman is, you should be running a country. Try attending kindergarten. <laughs> not kindergarten in today's schools, though. They are teaching them that, you know, gender is this social construct and we have to denounce the stereotypes of them. Um, if you go to kindergarten here in certain provinces in Canada, you may not be taught the difference between a man and a woman and what constitutes a woman. And um, I don't think that it is a biologist that needs to define a woman. Like, like you said, Ezra, anyone can define what a woman is and it's an adult female. Um, we have, you know, various physical, et cetera, differences than men and, um, the, the refusal to acknowledge that is just absolutely absurd. Um, I can't, I, I, every day, I can't believe that we are here and that we have people, as Avi said, running a country who is too afraid to simply define what a woman is. Yeah. You know, you're so right. Here I am. I'm 51. So I'm laughing. Ha ha. Everyone knows what, everyone, but you are so right. Um, that would be like saying everyone knows who um, Jimmy Carson was. No, not if you're under 40. Oh, well, everyone knows um, Benny Hill. No, not if you're under 50. You know, um, so uh, here I am laughing about it. And, and Matt Walsh of the Daily Wire, who's done important work on this, he's got to be late 40s. If you are in school today, it wouldn't be a lie detector test. It would be a memorization test. Can you regurgitate the baffle gab that your teachers told you about what a woman is? Chris Hipkins, the, the new New Zealand prime minister, is pro he looks like he's around 40, would you say? Um, mm -hmm. So he knows and he's lying. But you are exactly right. If you were to ask high school kids or college kids, they would not give, they, they probably would know, but they would be so terrified of giving the wrong answer, they would just regurgitate what the teachers told them. And that's if the teachers would tell them at all. The curriculums have been so radicalized by these diversity, inclusion, radical social justice warriors, because that's what they are. Um, for, for some school boards, I've been searching out who the policy advisors are on a lot of the curriculum that's been coming down the pike in the last few years, and namely in Ontario, because that's where I'm located. But a lot of these diversity, equity, inclusion uh, advisors self-describe themselves as social justice activists. Like they're, they're not even hiding their political leanings. And these are the people who are advising entire school boards on policy, how to um, institute human resources, change checks and balances, uh, bring in what are called supplementary materials. So we see a lot of very highly sexualized, even at times pornographic content materials being readily accessible to children in elementary school, in their, in their libraries, in our public libraries. Um, this is going, you know, the, the politicization of school. And, and, you know, as we just talked about with Trump, the politicization of the judicial system 
this is becoming a slippery slope of lack of neutrality, lack of impartiality, and people with clear political agendas are infiltrating and arguably have been for decades these systems and undermining that very neutrality that used to garner the trust of the public. We are, they're no longer institutions that we can say, oh, you know, that's where you go to learn your ABCs and your one, two, threes. No, that's where you can also go to learn radical ideologies that are based on theories instead of actual facts as the facts, like learning ABCs and one, two, threes are completely disregarded for preference to this one-sided narrative under the, this umbrella of being inclusive and tolerant. And as we see more and more protests and and public um, sort of the silent majority, as I like to call them, coming forward and denouncing many of these trends, um, these people who claim to be inclusive and tolerant are in fact the exact opposite, right? It's like Antifa being anti-fascism when in fact they use fascism to just silence any of their opponents and anyone who may disagree with them. That's a clip from something we call Rebel News Daily. It's our daily live stream hosted by my friend David Menzies, but the show also includes a rotating cast of hosts and special guests, including me. It's a great way for us to talk about the news of the day as the news is happening in an unscripted fashion, and it's an awesome way for you to interact with us as well. We stream every weekday, 1 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Mountain, wherever you find Rebel News. See you there.